Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. On Roku, in the sports section, vanity code, one word, is Dwyer Boxing News. The same on iTunes. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I've been surprised, I mean shocked really, by the attitude among many people that Chris Algieri has a chance to upset Manny Pacquiao. Right? Understand there seems to be a split because the betting lines on this fight are really uneven. Understand the gamblers as a whole based on the odds being offered by the casinos believe that Manny Pacquiao dominates. Right, Pacquiao's a better than 10 to 1 favorite. So the casino believes that Chris Algieri has little chance that this is really what back in the day used to be called a tune-up fight, even though it's for title. Right? But there's an excellent channel here online, Dante's Boxing Nation. You know, I like to pub great channels. And in Dante's Boxing Nation, the filmer, probably Dante, is going around the Mayweather gym and he's asking people, who do you think wins the fight? And a decent number of people actually say that they believe Chris Algieri is going to win. Right? These are people in the game. They also interview Chris Algieri in a separate video. And Chris Algieri makes the statement that the master boxer always wins. Right? Let me offer a different view. I think that statement is wrong. We've watched many fights where the master boxer gets blown out. Right? You can beat a chess player in boxing. My view of boxing is boxing's rock, paper, scissors. Right? Certain styles beat other styles, but lose to other styles. Right? I don't believe you really need to know how to deconstruct an opponent to win a fight. This is just like baseball, where a pitcher might have a blinding fastball and nothing else and could have a multi-year career in baseball as a relief pitcher for example. He doesn't have to know how to pitch. He just has to have a certain velocity and movement on his fastball that makes it hard to hit. Boxing's no different. Right now, let me back up just a second. If you want to see a great example of a chess player, I encourage you to just look at the ending of the rematch of Carl Frotch against George Groves. Right now, George Groves is the better athlete. George Groves is the faster handed guy. He has the superior foot speed. Right? But George Groves gives it away. He is fighting and he allows himself to be backed into the ropes, right? No doubt Carl Frotch, who's a chess player, is looking at Groves' positioning. He knows Groves is between him and the ropes. Groves has no place else to go. So Groves is in an Archie Moore type defensive stance, right? He has his hands like this, doesn't have his hands like this, has his hands like this. So as Carl Frotch throws punches, George Groves is leaning and picking them off with this hand. You've seen this defensive stance often, right? He's picking them off with this hand. So what Carl Frotch does is Carl Frotch comes in, he throws a perfunctory left hand. I believe he's aiming it at Groves's defensive hand, right? He throws a perfunctory left hand, Groves blocks it. You know the rest. After Groves blocks that shot, Carl Frotch comes across with his real punch, 
a right hand that's unblocked. Why? Because Groves doesn't have two hands up like this. Groves only has one hand up. Carl Froch, a chess player, knows that if he ties up this hand, he has a free shot on Groves. In fact, if you look closely at the film, Groves is actually trying to get off his own right hand as the last punch that ends that fight comes in. Now that's what chess players do. Carl Froch is a master boxer. Right, so Carl Froch is seeing how he can tie up his opponent, right, with fake punches or perfunctory punches and then land his home run balls. Right, if you go through the career of a master like Sugar Ray Robinson. You're going to notice fights where it looks like Ray Robinson is throwing punches just to hold the other guy. Right? Let's say the other guy has a hand like this. Ray Robinson will throw a punch just to pin the hand. So he can then come back up top on this side with a different punch. But understand, playing chess assumes you're at the chess board. You have a different style of boxing. I call it ambush fighting. Where guys are just outside. They're away from the chessboard. They're not engaging you. This isn't a, I'm watching you defend punches this way, so I'm throwing other punches and setting it up so I have open shots. No, this isn't that kind of boxing. I believe the Manny Pacquiao school of boxing is to be outside. Then it's to use speed. Understand Manny Pacquiao has some of the fastest hands in boxing. So what Pacquiao has is speed, power, and unpredictability. Especially early in fights. So he's not close to what Chris Algieri would call a master boxer. Right? He's outside. Then what he starts to do is he starts to, and keep in mind, he's a shorter fighter. So it's hard to figure out the angles. He jumps around and he sets a rhythm. Right? He sets a rhythm where you see him jumping around and his speed is such that it paralyzes you. Right? There's no pattern to it because he's not engaging you. He's outside. Then when he comes in, he has a tell. He likes to touch you briefly. He's a south boy. He likes to touch you briefly with his right hand. Then he throws a straight left. And it's accurate. It's accurate. Understand it's hard to figure out the angles because he's not showing you the angles. The speed jumps up on you. Mike Tyson used to have a saying. He said everyone has a plan until they get hit in the mouth. Master boxers are frozen against Manny Pacquiao. He's bouncing around. They're trying to sink their tempo to his tempo. Pacquiao will even move his head. He's not dodging punches. Understand, he's just moving his head to get you off rhythm. So he'll be bouncing around and he'll be moving his head. You're trying to figure out where he's gonna be. Suddenly, the fight speeds up. You can't Think straight. You're out of your comfort zone. You're fighting outside your measured pace. You can't think. Pacquiao then touches you with the right hand. Then he comes straight in with that power left. Right? Understand it's so precise that often that's enough to end the fight. He's fought some master boxers. Eric Morales in a slow-paced fight is 
great to watch. I've learned a lot just watching his fights. Take a look at the last Eric Morales Manny Pacquiao fight. And keep in mind, you know, Morales had fought Pacquiao before. Morales had beaten Pacquiao in their first fight. In the last fight, Manny's just too fast for him. You never even get to see the beauty of Eric Morales' game, right? Because he understands he needs to figure out Manny Pacquiao's entry point. Pacquiao's trainer, Freddie Roach, is a master at hiding his fighter's entry points. Look at Miguel Cotto against Sergio Martinez, right? These are guys who are out of the frame. Picture me bouncing around. They have a bounce. Picture me bouncing around. Then I'm out here. Then I'm out here. What's a master boxer doing? Right? He can't tie me up with fake punches or whatever. Right? Understand, too. A Kodo and a Pacquiao aren't making the mistake George Groves made. They're not up against the ropes with nowhere to go. No, Manny Pacquiao's out here. He's off the frame. This is this is how it seems. Picture me going like this, right? I'm going like this. Then suddenly, I just touch you, just for distance purposes, right? And it's fast. You see something coming in like this. Then by the time you're trying to figure it out, I come in, and it's straight. And I can reload in the blink of an eye. And I'm bouncing to the side. I never right in front of you right to YouTube Nation tell me why this Chris Algieri fight is different than Manny Pacquiao against Oscar De La Hoya tell me why this Manny Pacquiao fight is going to be different then Freddie Roach fighter at the time, Amir Khan, against Zab Judah. Ironically, Zab Judah is one of Algeria's sparring partners. Zab Judah has great hand speed, no question about it. But understand, he's stationary. If Chris Algeria is training with Zab Judah, they're playing chess, right? Zab Judah showed up to play chess against Amir Khan, who isn't as good a chess player as Zab Judah, right? Amir Khan's a guy who, when he's in against a chess player, think Julio Diaz. He got dropped, right? When Amir Khan stays in the pocket, Lamont Peterson, he doesn't do that well. That's not his strong suit. I understand he's changed trainers and stuff like that. Um, we'll see what happens when Amir Khan gets hit in the mouth, whether he still has a plan, right? But the point is, the night he fought Zab Judah, Zab Judah is there ready to play chess, right? Amir Khan didn't stay in the pocket to play chess. You can only play chess with the guy in the pocket at the chess board. Amir Khan's too far outside. Then he comes in. It's an ambush. Understand, guys with speed don't even have to read you. They come in, their combination can be predetermined. The point is, it's so fast, it forces you out of your game. Zab Judah was overwhelmed. This is a guy with hand speed. He just couldn't handle the ambush. He couldn't tell when Amir Khan was going to jump inside. Now what leads any of us to believe that Chris Algieri, who just beat a much slower Rushlin Provotnikov, at least according to the judges, not on my scorecard, but according to the judges, in a fight in which he got dropped multiple times, right? What leads anyone to believe that Chris Algieri, 
is going to be able to figure out Manny Pacquiao's entry point. Right? That Chris Algieri is going to do better than Oscar De La Hoya. Let me point out, the first time Manny Pacquiao faces Juan Manuel Marquez, a master boxer. Right? A master boxer. Marquez was so befuddled, he hits the canvas three times. Look at the third knockdown. The only reason we have a series between Pacquiao and Marquez is because referee Joe Cortez looks at Marquez with both shoulders on the canvas after he's knocked down the third time and doesn't stop the fight, continues to count, and Marquez beats the count. Had Cortez waved off the fight when Marquez hits the canvas and leans back on the canvas. I mean, folks, he's laid out. It's not flash. Manny Pacquiao would have had a first round KO over a master boxer. Now, Algeria is taller than Pacquiao. In my opinion, that's a liability, not an asset. Right? Because understand, I believe it's guys who are close to Pacquiao in height. Timothy Bradley. Right? Who can actually see Pacquiao. And who can actually time it. Right? I believe taller guys, think Oscar De La Hoya, don't know what to do. The angles are more bizarre to them. Seeing a shorter guy bouncing, you have to pay attention to the bounce. Because Pacquiao is so fast, if you don't pay attention to his timing, you're going to get caught flush and finished. Right? Understand, this is the difference between a lead puncher, which is what Pacquiao is, and a counter-punching opponent. Right? So, I believe the speed and unpredictability and the precision of Manny Pacquiao's left hand, which is straight, right, are going to be too much for Chris Algieri. I'm surprised by the people who think a boxing match is going to break out. Pacquiao's an ambush type of fighter. He's not there to box you. He's there to jump in with a predetermined script because it's predetermined. He's even faster. Right? Because he's not doing what Carl Frotch does. Carl Frotch is there looking at George Groves and Frotch is kind of like looking at his feet and he sees Groves going over to the ropes. I'm guessing Carl Frotch before the fight knew that if Groves was silly enough to be in front of him with one hand raise, that he was going to tie up that hand and be in position to deliver the right hand. Right? That's not what Pacquiao's doing. Pacquiao's outside. He's setting the pace. Right? The idea is what are you going to do to hit his fastball? He's not caught up on your idiosyncrasies. He's not the kind of pitcher who's going to be on the mound saying, hey, this guy has a problem with inside breaking balls. I'm going to set him up so I can come inside with a breaking ball late in the count. That's not him. This is the fastball pitcher's mentality. Right? I'm throwing 95. Can this guy catch up with my fastball? And I'm going to have a wind-up where the pitch is hard to time, leaving my hand. Right? And so, really, Pacquiao's kind of like Mariano Rivera. Right? You know it's a split-fingered fastball. He'll change the gear a little bit by not jumping in and by fainting. Right? The point, though, is... I haven't seen the Chris Algieri fight, and Algieri hasn't fought that many guys. Emmanuel Taylor, you know, Richmond Provodnikov, 
I haven't seen the Chris Algieri fight where he's dealt with an ambush fighter like this. Algieri is a master boxer. Algieri does have the length advantage. Algieri does have great legs. But Algieri's a counter puncher. He's not a lead puncher. Right? And he hasn't had to deal with speed like this. So I fear he's going to look like Zab Judah against Amir Khan. Right? Khan comes in, throws a combination, backs away. Judah at times is just trying to cover up. Right? That's all he's trying to do. If Manny Pacquiao gets Chris Algieri on his back foot, this could be a stoppage. I agree with the casinos on this one, and I'm someone who will take long odds in fights. But I agree with the casino on this one. I'm a bit surprised people are talking about Algieri's boxing talent. He is a master boxer. It might not matter here. Right? That's the thing with ambush fighters. They're not around, you know, you're here building a marginal line. You're here building up a style and stuff that you're going to use when you engage your opponent. Ambush fighters are not there to be engaged. Right? They're outside. Suddenly, here's the guy. Oh, he's throwing a lot of punches. You don't have time to say, oh, he does this. I do that. He does this. No, he's throwing a lot of punches. You're on the defensive because the guy's hand speed is that blinding and the guy's bouncing around. Then the guy's gone. That's how it is. Let me hear from you. I expect Pacquiao to win this fight. Pacquiao is a dangerous opponent. Right? Let me just say, if you believe Pacquiao beats Mayweather, this is the argument. That Pacquiao's too sudden. Right? That Pacquiao's too unorthodox. That Pacquiao wouldn't be there to box Floyd. He'd just be there to surprise Floyd. Shane Mosley, very quick-handed guy. Very quick-handed guy. He's in against Manny Pacquiao. You saw the way that fight went. Mosley, who can box? Right? Really, he's a slugger masquerading as a boxer, but he's been in against boxers. Right? Gets caught early, goes down, changes the fight. Once Mosley understands the suddenness of Pacquiao's power and that Pacquiao can drop him, the rest of that Pacquiao-Mosley fight is just Mosley trying to survive. Right? Mosley's not <laughs> mounting much of an attack. He's just trying to go the distance. I believe that's what's going to happen to Chris Algieri. Now, what amazes me is if he's down two times in the prior fight. Understand, Pacquiao has big power. Big power in that left hand. Big power. Why do we think he's going to be able to take Pacquiao's punch? I think that's an open question. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.